to maintain productive thinking is don't waste time on whose fault it is in a crisis. Blame doesn't fix anything. So many times we have a tendency to focus on who to blame and not realizing that all the energy you're spending on blaming and trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong and proving that you were right and this shouldn't have happened to you and whatever it is that went on in your life. It doesn't matter who caused the wreck. It matters that I'm wrecked and my head is bleeding and you have to prioritize when you're under attack what is most important and focus your energy on that. And blame is not important. Blame never fixed anything. After the crisis is over, we might have a discussion about how to prevent this from happening again. We might get down to what, whose fault it was, and generally a lot of times, fault is uh, broad enough to be shared. If what you're thinking isn't bringing about quantifiable results in your life, then you need to change your thinking. Failure means you've now learned another valuable lesson that pushes you one step closer to success. Failure is not the end all. People keep getting buried under failure. I bet you that you have failed more times than anyone in this room. Absolutely. I promise you, you have. I'm willing to bet that I have failed more times than anyone in this room because I have attempted so many things that you have no idea what I've attempted and failed at. But I don't let the failures define It's me. God pointing you in another direction. It's, it's, and, and, and it's clear about that. And you've got to be willing to f go with that bend because that bend in the road is the only way. Success is not a straight line. It is not. It's, it's crooked. It's down in a valley. It's back up over a mountain. I see life waltzing with me. Saying, you want to tangle? Come on. You want this? You willing to run over here? Come on. Are you willing to climb this mountain here? Come on. Are you willing to hold your breath and try and swim down to this level? Come on. I see it as a challenge. That introduces me to myself. And so we all have to look at life like that. It's a little game, I think. Some people don't know that they're not moving forward because they never measure their life. They never measure their life. So they don't know that they're not going for it. They just know that they got the pedal to the metal and they just know that they get up every morning, but they don't notice that Monday look, that Tuesday looks like Monday and that Thursday looks like Wednesday and that Friday looks like Thursday. And every day is basically repetitions of the same thing. You need to have measurements by goals of where you want to go in your life. I'm talking about development as a person as well. Whatever the goal is, development as a Christian, development as a believer, development as a father, do you have a goal for all of the titles that you wear? If you don't, you might not notice that you're not growing, that you're not going anywhere, and it might be that you haven't been defeated worried. Some people just go over and over the problem. I can't believe it. I can't believe this happened to me. I can't believe my son ran away. I can't believe I got a child in jail. Over and over again, what did I do wrong? I thought I was the best mother I know. And you just going over and over, skim over the problem and let's start focusing on being solution oriented. Training your mind to be solution oriented, whether you're a leader or an employee or just a person in general is very important. Train your mind to skim over the problem and focus on being solution oriented. How can I resolve it? How can I make it better? How can I fix it? And you can be that person, even if you have not been, you can be, but you have to train your mind to be solution oriented. If you're not careful, you will just bring people more and more problems and eventually they'll get tired of you. When people get tired of you, they will let you go. Now, you got a choice to accept the word or reject the word. See, there are diseases that people say are incurable, and they say they're incurable because records show or statistics indicate there's only 95%, rather there is a 95% of the people that get this disease die. And I say that if 5% live, then the disease is not incurable mm. because five people walked away. Now we need to look at those five and find out what was going on there. What happened? And I think that those five said, hey, I'm not ready to go. I've got some more living to do. I've got something else to do. 
and that they harness their feelings, they harness that healing energy that is within themselves, knowingly or unknowingly, they cause them to extend their lives. So what we've got to begin to do is only embrace those things that's for our highest good, that no one has the right to determine or has the knowledge to say how long we're going to be here, and that we can choose to surrender or we can choose to take a stand and fight. And there are a lot of people who fight who are still here. There are people who fight and who go, but at least they go out fighting. They didn't just surrender. They didn't just throw in the towel on themselves. And I'm saying that there is something in us as a power in an energy that's in us that we owe it to ourselves to take on anything, dis-ease in the body, poverty, opposition, whatever is between that and which we desire and we feel that will give us a full and rich life, we should fight for it. And you've just got to decide that my life is worth this kind of effort and fight with everything in you night and day with every breath that you have. Most people don't have that kind of fighting spirit. Most people expend more energy watching a football game or a basketball game or some type of sporting event than they will give to their dream. They spend more time talking about what happened on television in some soap opera, some spectacular entertainment event, stress relieving activity, than focusing on the possibilities for their own lives. They don't get that excited about themselves and their own potential for greatness. And I'm saying that we need to begin to start focusing in on ourselves and using our energies to move us from where we are in the direction of where we want to go. Overcoming the automatic mind, the things that our experiences, our past results have told us, our current reality, beginning to know that this is not it, that we are always involved in either creating reality or buying into the reality that we see. So we begin to learn how not to judge according to appearances. As we begin to, with everything in us, tenaciously to pull down the strongholds on our minds and do maintenance work to make sure that those negative thoughts and that automatic mind doesn't creep in on us again. So we're worrying about or beginning to only focus on and see the obstacles and the limitations as opposed to the solutions or the possibilities. As we work on ourselves constantly, what we will find is that we become at one or in alignment with the universe and we are able to produce what appear to be miracles to most people, but it's only a perfect outworking of the law when we are working in harmony with the universe. And so the, the key to it is, is, is beginning to, to continue to have a whole a vision of what you want to create, of constantly working with your feelings and your energy, keeping it positive and engaging in actions and having things where the pictures, scriptures, music, friends, relationships, goals that challenge you and feed into you and create this new reality for yourself. Because as you continue to hold that in focus, as you can continue to charge that with words and sell yourself on your having it, acting as if it already is, when you finally get that feeling, hit that level of consciousness, it will manifest. So when I hear people where their reaction is to about a problem, like let you and I were talking. You being Hispanic is working against you. Jason, you being an African American, it's working against you. Like you're gonna have to go uphill, but now what? You gonna sit and complain about it? Cause it won't help you, right? So if you have a goal, it's like, it does suck that women have to work harder to get to the same place that as a white male in America that I have to get to. But if it is true, if we're all going to accept that it's true, we can all sit there and go, we need to focus on the systems. Fair enough, and I'm glad that some people do that. The other option though is to say, well, I completely control me. And the one thing I will tell any human being alive right now, there is always room for the best. And once you're able, through your skills that have utility, to move somebody else closer to their goal, you will become a hot commodity, no matter what. No matter what, okay? Think about the scientists. What were the scientists after World War II? Right before they were scientists for us, they were Nazis. But we were way happy to let go of that because they had crazy skills that we needed, right? 
So really what it comes down to is what are your skills? Like if you've got skills that can be used to build something beautiful, to do something wonderful to the world, to help people move towards their goals, that will excite the masses because they, they want that thing that you're going to create, that it's going to improve people's lives. But only thing that mattered in all of that was you got really good at something. And somewhere along the way, we lost that the punchline is, no matter what you do to the system, you, as an individual, need to get extraordinary at something. And so my encouragement to people is, go get extraordinary. Like, don't worry about whether the system is broken or not. We built Quest, a billion dollar company, in less than five years, coming out of the Great Recession. So, more, what was it, in the Great Depression, more millionaires were created in the Great Depression than any other time in history? It's like, it just comes down to somebody goes, honestly, this is how I react. The system is too big and complicated. I'm too afraid to try to get caught up in fixing that. I'm too big of a chicken. There, I just said it. I'm too big of a chicken to deal with that. But I can deal with myself. I can go get extraordinary, right? So focus on that. Go get extraordinary. Go become the best of whatever it is you want to be. But go become the best of it and see how the world opens to you.